we're going to look at uh, confidence intervals of the population proportion. So um, out of 190 randomly selected adults in the United States who were surveyed, 71 exercise regularly. Construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of the population of all adults in the United States who exercise regularly. So we look at what our given statistics are in this problem and we're given that we have 190 people that were surveyed, so n equals 190. 71 of them, that's the successes. Success in this case is to exercise regularly, so there are 71 of them. And it's asking us to construct a 99% confidence interval of the population proportion p. So that interval looks like uh, p hat minus the error is less than p is less than p hat plus the error, where p hat is our sample proportion, and that's the value found by taking x divided by n. So, what's important here is to recognize uh, what type of confidence interval we're taking. That we're taking a confidence interval of the proportion as opposed to the previous stuff where we were taking confidence intervals of the mean. Um, so p hat is given by x over n. That's 71 over 190. Um, I could figure out what that is. Usually, I'd want to keep the 71 over 190 as a fraction um, in my computations because I don't want to round anything until the very end. Um, and then p hat, or q hat, excuse me, is 1 minus p hat. And so again, I would just figure out, you know, 71 plus 119 equals 190. So if I add these two fractions together, I get 1. And I can also look at what q hat is. But this, these four decimal places may not be enough. So I'm going to actually use the fractions in the next part. The next part is to find our error. So, you know, to find this error uh, for the for the mean, we just used Excel. You know, we could use a formula, or we used Excel for the proportions. We're going to want to use this formula that the error is the z alpha over two times the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. So, if we have a value for the confidence level that is common, so the common values are 90%, 95%, or 99%, then we're going to know what the z alpha over 2s are. So there, in this case, it's 2.576. Um, if we don't, we could always find the z alpha over 2 sort of by looking at this picture here is a picture of a standard normal distribution where um, The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So when we talk about a, a standard normal distribution, the mean would be zero and the standard deviation would be one. And then we're going to use this to help us sort of find this error. The z alpha over two is a z score, and it's the z score such that if we took two tails here, 99% of the data is in the middle and each tail contains alpha over two, or you know, one minus 0 0.99 divided by two. Oops, that's the alpha over two. And that's 0 0.005. So we would need to take that 0 0.005 and add it to this 0.99 to get the total area left of this z alpha over 2. And if we look on here, we could do Excel to find that, you know, for 99% confidence interval, it doesn't matter. We know it already. But this value, 2.576, is going to equal norm.inverse 0.995. That's the area to the left of z alpha over 2 with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. I'll do one next where the confidence level is an uncommon value. 
Okay, so having found that that error is 2.576, we then need to plug it into the formula for the error. So error is 2.576 times, so notice how I write this out, square root of 71 divided by 190, that's p hat, times 119 divided by 190, that's q hat, and then all of that divided by 190 again, n. And I can actually just take this whole thing, and that's how I can actually type it into Excel. So I'm just going to paste it in here so you can see that. In other words, I don't have to worry about extra parentheses around the top. This, this multiplication in between p hat and q hat will happen first. Um, the division and multiplication happens from left to right. So it does this division. Well, it does that division first, and then it multiplies by 119 and divides by 190. So that would be the product p hat times q hat, and then that divides all that by 190, which would divide it by n. And then it takes a square root of all that. So it's kind of nice. We can just plug this all in sort of from left to right, and Excel will calculate it for us, put equals in front of it, tab. So my error is 0 0.0904, and again, maybe I'll carry it to a few more decimal places, so 0 0.090410 would be six decimal places. Um, now I just need to take that error and add it and subtract it from p hat up here to find the confidence interval. So again, confidence interval is going to go p minus the error, p hat minus the error up to p hat plus the error. Um, I would suggest you do these computations in Excel. It helps you avoid rounding errors. So in, in our cell one here, that's the error. In this cell, I'm going to put um, p hat. So that's going to be, uh, forget, 71 out of 190. Then for my confidence interval equals, well, the left side would be p hat minus the error. The right side would be p hat plus the error. I've actually already rounded these, so um, normally they'd be more decimal places. And once you've done this final computation, you could round these down to whatever decimal place that the homework problem is asking for. I, I'll generally say two, three decimal places for these proportions. So um, three decimal places down here, 0 0.283 to 0 0.464. And over here, that would say that 0 0.283 is less than my population proportion P is less than 0 0.464. And that, that's my confidence interval. So the problem's actually done. Um, go on from there to state um, what this, how do we say this? Well, we say we are 99% confident that the proportion of adults in the United States who exercise regularly is between 28.3% and 46.4%. Um, in our picture, so the original picture I drew was with z-scores. In the picture for the proportion, we would have p hat right in the middle. That would be the uh, three, seven, uh, 37%. And then with 99% of the data in between those values, p hat minus e to p hat plus e would go from 0.283 up to 0.646. I'm sorry, 0 0.464. Okay, and then I'll just sort of look at the whole problem again. Um, the important thing here to recognize is that we're doing a confidence interval of the proportion. So once we recognize that, identify our statistics, n and x, and identify what confidence level you're looking for, 99%. Then we find p hat and q hat. Don't round them, wait. We find our z alpha over two. For common values, those are given. For uncommon values, we have to use uh, norm dot inverse for the area on the left of a, of a standard normal distribution. So that's with a mean of 
zero and a standard deviation of one. I'm going to do that example next. Um, so we, we plug that in, those numbers in, find our error. Then we set up our confidence interval, p hat minus the error, up to p hat plus the error. You know, I could write this using these other notations. That would be the actual interval, or I could write it as um, p hat plus or minus. Uh, maybe I'll just use my pen just to save myself having to find the p hat. p hat plus or minus the error would be, let's see, p hat is three seven, let's say 37.4%. So. 37.4% and then it'd be plus or minus the error, which was 9.0%. And actually, if, if we look at these values, look what happened. Um, on the upper end, 46.4, it matches, but on the lower end, 283, it does not. Um, and that's a rounding error. So that happened over here because I rounded this up and then that has a four sticking on it. So you can see if you just take rounded values, sometimes you can be off by one little spot like I would have been there. Okay. And then um, that will finish that problem and I'll do one in a second where we have to find the Z alpha over two manually.